I am obsessed, but I can't afford them now, so I'll just use fake ones. Take away and borrow and whatever you do. Oh my gosh. I can't remember the author's name, so I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna show you a picture of it. Look at her, she's so sweet. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the teacher tag. This is my first teacher tag that I've done on this channel. And there are 11 questions, so I'm gonna go through each question and read the question to you and share my answers with you. Since I haven't done a video like this, I thought it would give my new subscribers a little bit of information about me that they may not already know. Number one, what do you teach and where? So I'm currently teaching second grade in Western North Carolina. Second grade is by far my favorite of all the grades that I've taught. I taught fifth grade, I taught third grade, and then I've also taught second grade, and it is by far my favorite. I love the kids, I love the age, I love my team. I teach all subjects in my classroom. I teach ELA, which includes writing, reading, word work. I teach science and social studies, So I teach all subjects every day. If you watch my weekly vlogs, you know that I am on winter break right now and I will be going back to school tomorrow. So I will have new weekly vlogs for you in the new year. Number two is how long have you been teaching? I started teaching in 2005 and I have been teaching for 13 years. My first two years in the school system, I taught fifth grade and then I moved to third grade and taught third grade for five years. And then when I got pregnant with my daughter, I asked to be moved to a non-testing grade because it was just too much stress for me. And I had been in a testing grade for seven years, so I was ready for something new. And my principal decided to move me to second, and it was the best choice because I absolutely love second, and I've been in second grade for six years. Number three is, did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? I remember growing up that I used to play school in my room all the time, and I had discarded textbooks from school, and I used those as my teacher books. My sister and some of my neighbors were my students, and they weren't always cooperative, so it didn't always work out on my part. I had this big window in my bedroom, and I used to write on it with a dry erase marker because it would erase, and that was my whiteboard. I did consider going back to school to be an esthetician because I love skincare, and I used to have eyelash extensions about two years ago and I'm obsessed but I can't afford them now so I'll just use fake ones. Number four, what is your typical teacher outfit of the day? So I love dressing up for school. I typically wear dresses with sandals and a cardigan and in the winter months I wear pants and dresses as well and I just pair them with leggings and boots and a cardigan. Dresses are like an outfit that you can wear year-round. Plus, it's one outfit for one price. I have a cardigan in just about every single color because I can layer and when it gets warm in my classroom, if I have a short sleeve shirt on under a cardigan, I can just take that off or put it on if I get chilly. And they go with dresses and I just love cardigans. Hashtag, you're a teacher if you wear a cardigan. <laughs> I just want to be comfy and I want to be cute because I'm up and down and walking around all the time. I get in the floor with my kids, so I just need to be comfortable. Now, as far as shoes goes, I am obsessed with shoes. I think shoes are my favorite part of an outfit, and so I have all kinds of different shoes that I wear to school. And most of all, they have to be comfortable. And I'm willing to spend $100 on a pair of shoes if they're gonna be comfortable because I'm on my feet all day long. I just wanna be comfortable. Do you feel me? Number five is what do you typically bring for lunch? I typically bring my lunch to school every day. Some days I don't and I end up getting a school lunch. Or I will take snacks. Some of the things I take for school lunch are usually leftovers from something that I've made the night before. 
if I go out to my parents' house and they make dinner, then I usually get leftovers from them as well. I like to take soup just because it's easy. I'll just take my own bowl and a can of soup, open it up, pop it in the microwave. It's really easy and it's really good, especially in the winter months. I like to take sandwiches. I'll usually take a sandwich that's got turkey and mayonnaise or lettuce and tomato. Something easy and simple. Sometimes I'll take a bagel with cream cheese. If I don't have anything to make for lunch or I'm running late and I didn't pack it the night before, then I will typically take some snacks just to snack on during the day because sometimes I also get busy at work and I don't really have time to stop and eat, so I'll just take some snacks. I like to take things like granola bars or fruit. That I might take pistachios. I take yogurt or cottage cheese with fruit. And I like to take cheese sticks as well because they're easy and they're really good and they have a lot of protein. I also pack my daughter's lunch every day. She would rather take her lunch than buy school lunch, but there are some things on the menu that she really likes. She likes the chicken nuggets, and we usually do school lunch on Fridays because they have pizza, and she loves pizza. I try to pack our lunches the night before so that in the morning I don't have to do that and add that to my morning routine because I'm already like to the minute out the door, this is what we have to do, let's go. I try to eat healthy on a regular basis, but I am human and I like sweets, and chocolate and candy and cake and ice cream. Number six, what is one of your favorite books about teaching? So I was thinking about all the books that I've read and the book that I think is my favorite right now is the Morning Meeting book by, I can't remember the author's name, so I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna show you a picture of it. So the book is actually called 80 Morning Meeting Ideas for Grades K-2. Now I do have the morning meeting book and I just actually started reading it over winter break, but this is a book that has ideas and reasons and tips and tricks for how to get your kids to participate in a very successful morning meeting. This is what the book looks like. I've actually shown this book in one of my vlog videos and I absolutely love it. So if you are a teacher and you are doing morning meeting in your classroom, I highly recommend this book. So this book has 80 easy to do activities for your morning meeting that will help it to be purposeful and engaging for your students. There are 20 friendly greeting ideas. There are 20 sharing ideas, 20 engaging activities, and 20 inspiring messages. It also has tips and tricks to help you plan your morning meetings so that you know what you're doing and your students know exactly what is expected of you during this time. So I will leave a link for that book down in the description box as well as the morning meeting book that goes along with it. Number seven is what is one of your favorite teacher movies? So I had to think about this because honestly I haven't seen a whole lot of teacher movies but as I was scrolling through looking at some ideas I saw one movie that caught my eye that I have actually seen, and it is Mr. Holland's Opus. This movie is based on a teacher who is actually a music teacher, and he goes through so many life disappointments, so many frustrations, and he just can't seem to get through to his kids. So he changes himself and decides to use whatever it takes to help his students learn. He builds relationships with his class. He has some disappointments and frustrations that go on in his home life. And so he just has a passion for teaching and he learns how to do it in a way where all of his students can learn to the best of their ability and he grows relationships with them and it's just a heartwarming movie and I highly recommend it. I will leave a link for the trailer down in the description box so you can click down there and check out the trailer if you haven't seen it and then go rent it if you want to. Number eight, who was your favorite teacher? So my favorite teacher has to be my second grade teacher. Her name was Miss Maynard. And I remember being in her class and really struggling with reading. And she was always so helpful and so kind and so friendly and welcoming. And just, I felt so happy that she was my teacher because I just loved the positivity and the excitement that she brought to learning. I remember also having a hard time with 
borrowing and subtraction, the typical algorithm where you stack the numbers and take one take away and borrow and whatever you do. That's how you subtract it. You stack the numbers and you borrowed and you carried and it was just totally confusing to me because I didn't understand why and there really isn't a reason why, but she helped me figure out a strategy to learn how to borrow successfully and it was just such a huge struggle that she helped me overcome. That was 29 years ago, if you can believe that. Oh my gosh. 29 years ago, I was in second grade. That makes me feel really old. Man, how times have changed. My classroom then is nothing like my classroom now. And being a second grade teacher and teaching like I teach math, I understand numbers so much better now. So honestly, I wish they had taught math the way they do now back then. Number nine, who are some of your favorite teacher YouTubers, Instagrammers, and Snapchatters? I'm gonna share with you three teacher YouTubers that have inspired me, given me ideas, and I just love watching their videos. And these teacher YouTubers are also super friendly and have communicated with me through messages, and that just makes me feel really happy. And I love sharing and having this YouTube community with teachers who actually respond. So the first, person that I want to mention is Vanessa from My Second Grade Life. I just started watching her about a month ago, I guess, and I've been totally obsessed with her videos. She teaches in Southern California. She teaches second grade, so it's really neat to watch her videos and get ideas from her and share with her. I love how she is so genuine in her videos, and I totally respect that. I will leave a link down to her channel in the description box if you're interested. You can go over and check out her channel and I'm sure you will love it as much as I do. The second person I want to mention is Jessica from The Social Speechy. I will leave a link to her channel down below as well. She lives in Florida. She is a PE teacher who has gone back to school to be an SLP, which is a speech language pathologist. She has some really great videos and teacher tips and all of that kind of stuff, so go check her out and you'll see what I'm talking about. The third person I want to mention is Michelle from Pocketful of Primary. She is like the YouTube teacher of the year and I give her props for her videos, her time, her effort, her energy, and I love watching her organization tips. I have purchased lots of things from her TPT store, which I will also link in the description box. The videos of hers that I love watching are the ones that she posted a while back when she used to teach second grade. I get so many great ideas from her and I love her organization and her positivity. You can click on the link below to see her channel as well. Number 10, what is some of your best classroom management tips? I think that my best classroom management tip is to build relationships with your students. If you get to know your students early on and you build relationships with them and you treat them with respect and let them feel loved on a daily basis and let them know that you're proud of them and communicate with their parents, then they are going to respond to that and you are gonna get so much more out of them than you would if you were having a power struggle with them. Like I said, I've been teaching for 13 years and I think that the last three years have been the best for me just because I've realized that you have to build those relationships with not only your high students, but your low students, your middle students, your low income students, your behavior problems, all of your students, you have to build relationships with them and let them know that you care about them and you love them and they will learn and they will grow and, and they will respond to that. It helps them build that intrinsic motivation where they want to do well and they want to please you and they want to see progress. And it makes them proud of themselves. And it makes me proud and it makes their parents proud. So overall, that is what I think is number one, build relationships with your students. Another thing that I wanna mention is being consistent and doing what you say you're gonna do. If you have consequences for behavior issues, then follow through with those consequences. If you offer your class rewards or incentives for doing something or for having a certain behavior or for completing assignments or for whatever it is, then follow through with that. Make sure that you do what you say you're gonna do because then your students can trust you and they know that when you say, if we do this, we'll get this, that you're gonna do it. 
Don't say it if you can't own up to it. And the same way goes with parenting for all you mommies out there. If you say you're gonna do it, do it. And number 11, the last question is, what is one reason you decided to become a teacher? So it's really hard for me to decide on one reason because there are several. But after thinking about this question, I feel like the number one reason I decided to become a teacher is because I love kids. I love kids. They are so much fun. I love watching them grow and mature and learn. It's so rewarding to me to see their excitement when they know that they can do it and they do it and they're proud of it. And Maisie wanted to say hi. Look at her, she's so sweet. I know. She has to be in every one of my videos. Kids also say the funniest things and their little naive minds are just so precious. And I just love to see their perspective on things. Kids have taught me so much about myself, about respect and being patient and understanding and knowing that they are humans too. And if you respect them, then they will respect you. So that is all of the questions for this teacher tag. I will leave all of the questions down in the description box if you want to do this tag too. I tag everyone out there who has not done this tag already and who is a teacher because I love watching these tags and hearing about you guys. Megan from Too Cool for Middle School created this tag. So thank you to her for creating this tag. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned a little bit about me. And if you did, click on the thumbs up button down below this channel to let me know you liked it and to share this teacher tag out so we can get more teachers to participate. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel. Make sure to check out my daily teaching vlogs. I will have them in a playlist on my channel. So my cats just touch noses. I think they're starting to like each other. Thank you for all your love and support and those of you who are leaving me comments i love reading them and responding to them thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye